1960, and we hold classes. 1960, 1958, and we hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. In this school, we use the true. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, as they are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted by God. And the true name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul tells us, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and there are God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name all, and, each, and each God must have a name also. <clears throat> Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into any good encyclopedia or dictionary will prove to you that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any character in their alphabet capable of producing the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there letter J in our own English language until some 1,400 years after the Messiah's death. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on it is within, is within the cloud. In like manner, everything within the universe is within the pure spirit shape of Yahweh. It's pure state. State. Now Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim, a superincorporeal being that's having a shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later, the self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Only one name. Now there is only one name given unto salvation whereby we can be saved. We all, we all Therefore, must, we all must know this name. and we all must know this name. Therefore, the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is. What was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had during the preface of the Holy Name Bible. In this school, also, we, the school. also in the school, we teach according to the to the um, pattern of the divine, pattern. divine pattern of the universe. And this is the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. This pattern consists of after Yahweh, after Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of Egypt into the wilderness of Sinai, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this threefold tabernacle pattern in a vision. This pattern consists. Later, Moses. I'm sorry, I'm getting way ahead of myself. He later. he later instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Um, this pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. And these three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and abides by the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Case. That's the thing that they need a cheat sheet there. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case. Our 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of this institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, <coughs> pardon me, and the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, is to extirpate current superstition skepticism and ignorance sixth is to learn know and understand the operation of yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by lucifer the devil the dragon 
or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which is once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained and that there is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. At this time, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by, do you have it? Ah, oh, there we go. Um, at this time, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Sean Hudgen Mortal from Ontario, California. And our scripture reading today will be Luke, the 16th chapter, if that could be read by Dr. Leonard James. Sean, are you able to do the uh, prayer today? Yes, I am. I'm sorry. I just got a new phone and I didn't know how to unmute myself. All right, everybody, please let's bow our hearts and minds for a moment of prayer. I got to do it myself as well. Dear Heavenly Father Yahweh. We pray that what's spoken from the floor today edifies the body of Yahshua the Messiah, uh, that all those ha who have come seeking to find and know you as you really are and actually exist, come to a greater and more profound understanding of your divine purpose, pattern, and plan through the listening of the preaching of the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. We pray that it is you who speak through each one of the vessels and not themselves. All these things in the name of your only begotten son, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. 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 Good morning, everyone. I will be reading Luke's chapter. Is that correct? Luke you guys, the 16th, yes. Yes, thank you. I, I will be reading it from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and vari various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Association, Inc. Luke 16. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give me an account of thy stewardship for thou mayest be no longer steward then the steward said within him, within himself, what shall I do for my master taketh away from me the stewardship? I cannot dig to beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of them of his master's debtors unto him and said unto the first how much owest thou unto my master and he said a hundred measures of oil and he said unto him take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50 and then he said to another and how much owest thou and he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said unto him Take thy bill and write for a score. Think ye the master commended the unjust steward because he had done shrewdly, because the children of this age are in their generation more shrewd than the children of light. What I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the man, mammon 
and unto righteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into an age lasting habitations. He that is faithful and that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust and the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the righteousness of mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is yours, your own? No servant can serve two masters, for neither he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve Yahweh and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who was covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but Yahweh knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of Yahweh. The law of prophets were unto until John. Since that time, the kingdom of Yahweh, it's preached and every man treats it with contempt. Yet it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one little than one tittle of the law to fail. Whosoever put it away his wife and marrieth another committed adultery. And so whosoever married her that is put away from her husband committed adultery. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of swords and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his swords and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And Shiloh, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus his bosom, and his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in the flame. For Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can thy pass unto us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, and that he may testify unto them, lest they, they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father, Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. That was Luke 16, chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our first speaker this morning will be Dr. Sarah Lattimore. I'll, try, I'll read out the Can you read out the whole thing. Can you move that chair, Dad? Good yes. morning, everybody. Um, you, sir. Pleasure to morning. be here with you all um, and to um, <clears throat> have anything at all to say about our Heavenly Father. Um, it, it really truly is a gift to to know and understand anything about about our Heavenly Father. 
um, there's there's a majority of the world that doesn't have any idea who Yahweh really is, and they don't know that He actually exists. And that's our first name here in the our first aim in the institute is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as He really is and actually exists. And He's given us all of the tools that we needed. He's given us all the armor that we need to keep on in our daily lives in this world so that we can focus on Yahshua through all of the nonsense going on and that we can we can have life and have it more abundantly um, just by the knowledge and understanding that he's allowed us to have of him. Um, in 1931, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley had a vision, as we know, and he said, make me prove it until you're satisfied. He, he didn't say, sit down, be quiet, kneel, stand, sit, eat this, drink this, do as I say. You're never going to know anything about God until you die. Um, Dr. Kinley <clears throat> actually was able, because he was brought in at the end of this age, he was, he was able, through Yahweh in the body, but Holy Spirit working, teach us things about himself and tell us that everything we've learned our whole lives was wrong. We never had a right thought in our minds. Um, everything we knew, we were we were lied to, we were deceived, and we need to be saved from that. Um, let's get real quick Revelation 12 and I think it's 7, just you know where this all came from because there's two <clears throat> mysteries. There's the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of iniquity. That are operating right right now and have been all along and and satan says that he's going to be like the most high but let's let's pick up a little history where what happened here all right this is uh, revelation 12 and and it was war in heaven is that where you want yeah. it yeah. Yeah. verse 7. and there was war in heaven so there's a war in heaven okay <laughs> not good they're fighting read michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angel and prevailed not Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So Satan and his angels lost the war, and they were kicked out. Read. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength. The kingdom of our Elohim and the power of our Messiah for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before Elohim day and night. That's good. So so it, it calls them out right there. It, it describes the kind of it, it, his demeanor. He's he's evil. He's wicked. He's he doesn't listen. He's he's going to oppose Yahweh at all costs. Um, so it describes his demeanor right there, and it tells us that he was cast down into the earth plane to deceive some people. No, it says the whole world. That's you and I, okay? And we were deceived. We were all dead on arrival. Before we came into this gospel, there was not a good thing about us. There's still not a good thing about us, but once that Holy Spirit works in you and moves you, you act differently. There's a change. There's a conversion. Um, that's the, the So I, I, I brought all that up just to say that we need a Savior. We need a Savior from that devil who did deceive us who has deceived us our whole lives and we are we have been brought into the bosom of the father to learn and know of him and have any understanding of him that is a beautiful thing that is mind-blowing and mind-boggling when you you really get in that 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 calm quiet place and you really get to thinking about the state and condition we were in before we knew our heavenly father because john 17 and 3 i gotta get it please it's one of my favorite See, if you once you have an understanding of our Heavenly Father through this pattern, it was shown way back here to Moses up in the mount, and he built one in the wilderness of Sinai. Once you have any understanding of this pattern at all, and you see that it's a tool just to point out Yahweh in everything, in everything. Read, please. John 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal. We have an explanation of what eternal life is. Read. That they might know the only true El. In Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. There's your key. There's your ticket, right? To know Yahweh, our Elohim. You've got to know him. 
And how do you know Yahweh? It's not from sitting out there in the churches because I didn't learn anything worth anything in 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 the church. I um did my first communion when I was eight, I think, and it was scary and terrifying. I wasn't comfortable. I didn't feel calm or or the least bit okay with what was happening. It was all very weird to me. I learned what I had to learn. I recited what I had to recite. I don't remember any of it right now. I, it, it was just in one ear and out the other, thankfully, you know, um, but it, it didn't make sense to me and I didn't like it and I wasn't at all comfortable. And then, you know, we're brought down into this school that isn't a church. Nobody's telling you that a sit, nail, stand, nothing. They're not, they're, no one's telling you that. In fact, your requirement is do your homework. Do your homework. If you're not a book person, you don't have to hit the books. Just take a walk outside. Look at the creation. Look at this pattern operating throughout throughout your daily life and all throughout history, his story. You use the tools that we've been given to help us focus on Yahweh and, and Yahshua through all things in our life. That is the only, um, that's our only hope and our only salvation. Um, as the moderation says, um there's only one name given unto salvation and we all must know that name so the simple like duh why didn't i think of that well yet intelligent question is what was the name of the savior during you walked the earth plane? you know no j no jesus we've heard that all the time well really think about it you want to hang on to that name and you want to call him jesus because that's what you're used to all the time well you know what there's no salvation in that name you've got to get over that there's no J, there's no Jesus, there's no Jehovah. His name is Yahweh. Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh and his son is Yahshua. He comes in his name and it just makes sense. There's comfort in that name. There's comfort in knowing the truth in knowing that you can have eternal life just by having a little bit of wisdom, knowledge, and intelligence that Yahweh is going to give us. <laughs> He's going to give it to you. He's going to give you that foundation, power, and strength by looking at this pattern and realizing that it's one, two, three, but one. Um, and that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this pattern. That's a very, very bold statement. It's a very bold statement. And you've heard it. Be, you've heard me say it before. One of my most favorite things is telling a little kid, go find something that doesn't come in threes. It, they can't do it. You know, they try and trip you up, but but you get down to it and everything is made and operates according to the pattern. There's comfort there. There's repetition. There's over and over and over again. You know that this pattern is going to point things out to you about your Heavenly Father. You know that you're going to go through a death, burial, and a resurrection every day. When you go to sleep, you're going to resurrect in the morning. You know because it's happened your whole life. You've never not woken up in the morning because you're still here. Mm -hmm. It's that repetition. It's that comfort, you know, but we go to what we know when we're, when we're in turmoil, right? We, we go to what we know. We go to our comfort, things that make us feel better, things that make us um, calm, calm ourselves. Some people turn to drugs and other bad things or food or whatever, but where we really need to go is none of those physical things are going to take care of it. It's only makes you feel better for a second. It doesn't work. The only true comfort we have is in Yahshua the Messiah. That's it. And you have that all the time. He's all he's always with us. He's ever present in our lives. And you you gotta you gotta think about that, you know, chew on that one. It's the the amount of, of things that he has protected us from and kept us from in our lives is really beautiful. Um I've heard many, many testimonies on and numerous brethren that without Yahshua, they wouldn't be here today, you know? Um, and that that's a reality and that's a fact. There's two mysteries. You gotta keep that old boy off your back and focus on Yahshua. Work on this pattern, just see it working in everything. Um, talk to their heavenly father, all just when you're driving in your car, when you're alone, when you're falling asleep, when you first wake up in the morning, talk to Yahshua, he's there, he's always there. And he will keep you and he will protect you from from satan and and you know when we're going through our hard times and everything you just you need to focus on yashua and listen like okay what are you trying to show me here got my attention clearly you know i knocked me down knocked me down knocked me down okay i'm listening I don't don't want to be like jonah and go somewhere i'm not supposed to you know but he's constantly working with us and he's constantly there 
and just realize that and know that and and we're in the bosom of the father there is comfort in all of this nonsense going on in the world there's comfort and the only comfort we have is yashua the messiah through our brethren through these the this google meets platform through zoom through you know there, there is comfort there is comfort for us all and just don't get wrapped up in this world. Don't let it get you down. Don't let it knock you down. I, and I'm talking to myself. I need to. I need to. I need to hear this every single day because that old boy is really on our back, and it's it's ugly. Just focus on Yahshua. Know that he is our only hope, and just keep learning and and paying attention because we're going to need everything that we can get to get through this world, um, and 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 get get beyond this fleshly state and condition that we're in. Um, and I'm, I'm very thankful to know anything about Yahshua and I'm very thankful that, um, he has kept me and is allowing me to continue to learn and know and grow. Um, and that's all I really have in my mind. Thank you guys for the time. Praise Yahshua. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Lattimore. Our second speaker this morning will be Dr. Jeanette Salmon from Hamilton, Ontario. Talk from the top of my head. <laughs> no, that's all you can do. Spirit love you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, Jeanette. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. Strange enough, I was looking at Luke 15, I think, the prodigal son. And I can surely say that before any of us came into this class, we were all prodigal sons because we were out there in the churches. And we didn't do anything for ourselves. We just sat there in class or church and listened to the minister. But then we got knowledge and understanding of this class and we have come to know and to understand it is Yahweh's purpose and his plan, not mankind's. Now we're having so many disasters going on now we don't know where to turn our thoughts. But the main one that I was thinking of, I think somewhere in the Bible say, the rich will be richer and the poor will be poorer. But it didn't say the rich will have wisdom. And these, was it five or six people who went down on this submarine yeah five yeah yeah and i know i wouldn't be one of those <laughs> because i'm claustrophobic and it's even hard for me to think of <laughs> when you die you're in that closed area you don't know what's going on but those people went down. I don't think they expected or that they were not going to make it back. But I still don't know why anyone wants to go down so far in the deep. Why would you want to go and look at a ship? that has been destroyed you should take some lesson from that my mother has always used this phrase people are flying in god's face and if you spit in the sky it's gonna fall in your face mm -hmm. and 
at first you wonder why these things happen, but people have no way of thinking to themselves, I must be obedient. Let me try and find out more about these things that are going on. And we in this class has come to understand a lot. I knew from a young age, there had to be something that brought us in this world, someone that made this world that we are able to live in it. And it is Yahweh's footstool. And he's, he's taking care of us. He's using us as his vessels that we may go around and tell people of his purpose and his plan. But when you try to speak to people to even tell them the name. I have a friend who always says to me, how do you know? And I, I just use my little phrase that I think they'd understand. I says, how do you know you're gonna wake up in the morning? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know what is going on. We just have to have faith and believe that Yahweh is always with us. He's never going to leave us. There's that, I'm going to say, man's parable where it's the praying hands where two people were walking. And at one point, you only saw one footstep going and the other person said to Yahweh where were you when I needed you and Yahweh says I was carrying you when you couldn't make it any further and sometimes if we just look at these little things try to understand them and let them be our guide. We wouldn't be doing some of the things that we see going on in this world today. When I first started in this class, which is many years ago, there were so many brilliant speakers. And yet now, there's many of them that have gone astray and are adding and subtracting to what our founder, Dr. Kinley, told us. And in Revelations, I don't know if I can't remember if it's 22. It's the last verse, yeah, yeah. The last chapter and verse of Revelations. Yeah. Last couple of verses. Whoever adds or subtracts from what is stated, those plagues will be added on to them. We don't want that to happen to us. There is enough problems right now going through this world that we have to deal with. And so... That wasn't about your good. That wasn't about your good. Somehow, you're oh, okay. Yeah. And then we come to Lazarus, and is it Dives? Yes. Lazarus was the poor one. He he was full of sores. No one, this rich man used to go by him every day, well-dressed, handsome and everything, never offered Lazarus any help. 
But then we've come to learn that both of them died. Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham and Dives. He was sweating it out down in the hot place. And he said to Abraham, could he let Lazarus just touch the tip of his finger in water and so that he could touch his lips because he was just burning up. But Abraham said, remembered you had the good things, Lazarus had the bad things. Lazarus cannot come to you, nor can you come to him, because there's a gulf, and no one can cross over. But Dives pleaded and asked if someone could go to his brothers, because he doesn't want them to come to that place where he's at. But none, none of us, is going to know anything what happens after our demise from this world. People have seances and all that to bring back someone to tell them things. That is so wrong. But then they will understand it by and by that their only savior is Yahshua. He died on the cross for our sins. He was spotless. He was without blemish. But he knew we needed a father. He knew we needed a savior. And he came down and he took on all our sins and he died on that cross for us. So whatever we do now, it is by his grace. A new covenant was made by the shedding of his blood for us. And the more we come to remember these things and know that Yahshua is our savior and that all praise and glory belongs unto him. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Salmon. Our third speaker this morning will be Dr. George Light from Belleville, Ontario. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. All right, yes, perfect. Thank you. I, I certainly enjoyed the first two speakers a great amount because what I was hearing from them was love. <laughs> that we talk about all the other things going on in the world, but I, what I felt from them was love and confidence in the one who loved us first. Um, could I get Romans 6.23? I think it is. And that and that's what this is all about. This is all about the love of the creator towards us so that we can have a knowledge and understanding about him uh, as the term would be <laughs> in his pure spirit state which we had no chance of ever knowing anything about. And out here in the world we talk to them. We talk to as many people as we can. Yashua willing and the, these zoom classes are going throughout the world and people are ignoring the simplest of things but they they they're ignoring them because of what Yashua has given us and it's in that's what is making or giving us our strength we know it's the Holy Spirit but there's nothing you did to earn it and you can feel that inside of you 
when the time is needed that you need it. Um, and the previous speaker was talking about the two footsteps becoming one. And whenever we want to, whenever you're telling your <laughs> innermost secrets to Yahshua within yourself, nobody else knows those secrets but you and Yahshua who dwelleth in you and he already knows what you need to pray for and what you need and what you want and what you need to be delivered from that's what i heard from the first two speakers so that you can have confidence in yourself that yashua is going to deliver you and he showed us all the way down through the history of the scriptures is a deliverance and all the way down through that there was a promise and the promise was always fulfilled all the way down through can i romans 6 23 i think i called for i got it romans 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of yahweh is eternal life through yahshua the savior our through yahshua the messiah our savior so it's a gift from Yahweh. It's a gift to you. It's a gift to me. It's a gift to Lazarus in the in the sense of the Luke, uh, the scriptures that we were reading. It was a gift to Lazarus versus the, the, the rich man. It was a gift to Lazarus to be in the bosom of the father where it was a rich man who enjoyed the life that he had um, that wasn't in the bosom of the father, wasn't given the gift. And right there it just told us if you could read that again nick that would be great <laughs> this is romans 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of yahweh is eternal life through our savior yahshua the messiah right there is what we're fighting against out here now we're fighting about within our own family as it were those who came before us as jeanette had mentioned great speakers people you would look up to it and and hear and before we started kathy was talking about all the conventions she went to can you imagine all the great speakers that she heard of and we know it's not them as speakers but we do understand that we were given credit just as the pharisees here in this luke were talking about the credit they were looking for the credit of men i don't know what these people out here that were in class that are trying to deceive us with this dr kenley stuff i don't know what how they got to where they were we looked up to these speakers and heard what they were saying and they appeared to be great in our eyesight because i'll tell you right now i'm not a i'm not a great speaker nor am i ever going to be a great speaker but there's a there's a lot of people who aren't great speakers and they get up through yashin messiah and say one word that makes you rejoice within your heart for the joy of of knowing something that you never knew before and if i get rambling just ring a bell on me but um last week when ben was talking he mentioned something about a ball of yarn and when you think about it that's exactly well it's the same similar if you look at a ball of yarn and you look at a brain a picture of a brain they look similar and and what that triggered for me was the thought that a ball of yarn you it it's a tangled mess you can't see nothing the beginning or the end of that ball of yarn it, it's a mess and what happens is is you get brought into this class and you get sat down and you get told hey george what there was no j in any language listen you know how many people just from on this call who have said that to somebody a lot but they're not hearing it because Yahshua hasn't given the ears to hear or the heart to receive the Holy Spirit so that we can have faith and confidence in what we're hearing. And the ball of yarn, and the other speaker last week also mentioned about vastness of this knowledge. You think about it, look at this creation chart we have up here. The vastness of knowledge that Yahweh has put before us to learn about him as much as we can, but also to have confidence in. We're down at the end time where we need not confidence in Yahshua and Messiah being in you, not beside you, not in another room, not in a building, with you to help you and strengthen you through deliverance.
Um, so the ball of yarn. But when you roll out a ball of yarn, you know what you have? Two ends. You have a beginning and an end. You have Isaiah, I think it's 8 and 20, line upon line. If that's the right one, could somebody read that? Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Is anybody reading? Sorry. 28, 9, and 10. Sorry. Of whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with a stammering lip and another tongue, he will speak to his people. That's how we're, That's how we are still here. That is, and we know it's the Holy Spirit, but the, the Holy Spirit is teaching us line upon line. And when you take that ball of yarn and you roll it out, it has two ends, a beginning and an end. And it's it's a line. And that's exactly what we've seen on the elementary chart. Everything that we've been taught is line upon line, here a little, there a little. Everything pointing to Yahshua the Messiah coming in and going through a death, a burial, and a resurrection. That's the line that we're on. That's the line that gives us stability and strength to endure what is going on in the world. There's all kinds of Zoom classes going on, all kinds of lectures. And each one of them, when the speaker's speaking, you can tell by what they're saying, what is the intent of their heart? Are they after glory or are they after having that person that's listening hear something that will change their life so that they might receive the Holy Spirit and eternal life. You share what you love. When you're cooking for somebody else, you cook what you love, hoping that they love it too, because you're trying to share the meal that you had that make you feel as you do. Can I get Romans? Because of what's going on in the world and what's going on in class and everything else that's going on in their struggles, can I get Romans 1 18? We always read 19 and 20 because we know that that tells us everything there is to know about Yahweh from the from the cell, the atom, all of that being three, and these are one, and we know that it's the Holy Spirit that we need to have deliverance. So uh, we have confidence. Nobody's going to take away that confidence. So Satan tries to get at you another way. Uh, Romans 1 18, if you would, please. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all impiety and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There's the key. There's the key right there. They're not, they can't hold the truth in unrighteousness if they don't have it. That's and right. in this school, we know the people that walked around with Dr. Kinley. We, we've heard of Dr. Harris, Aaron Bryan, all those other, and I'm not, I'm not saying nothing about the vessels. I'm just saying the names that were around. However they're conducting themselves is up to them to sort out between them and Yahweh. But they're the only ones that can hold the truth in unrighteousness. And we've got all the transcripts you want to ever read with regards to who our Savior is. We have the scriptures that go back 4,000 years before the Messiah and the writing since then and everything that Dr. Kinley through his vision was able to reveal so that we can have a knowledge and understanding of our creator. He did the miracles. He, I haven't seen Dr. Kinley. I never saw Yahshua. When you talk about faith over in, Ma in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, that's all we have is faith. Sarah didn't meet Dr. Kinley. Not to my knowledge, anyways. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. I know I didn't. Um, we don't have that vision of that man. We don't have the presence of that man in our mind and in our understanding to be able to give glory and honor to the man. What we're giving glory and honor to is the spirit that was in that man. And we're looking for that same spirit to be placed in us so that we can have a knowledge and understanding of our creator so that we can share in eternity. Now, this is what's on my mind since the ball of yarn. <laughs> um, so 
back in, I'm not going to get all these scriptures because I, I want to hear some other folks if we may. But back in Exodus, when they came out of the uh, Egypt, did I have the Moses chart in case people are looking at the screen? <clears throat> when they came out of Egypt and they're before the mount, and in Exodus, the 20th chapter, Yahweh speaks down the Ten Commandments. And in the Exodus, the 24th chapter, after he had done all this, the people say, all that Yahweh has said, will we do? They had the truth. When Moses goes up into the mountain, and they come down and they build the golden calf. Um, and what, what, sorry, there's a, I think it's, Exodus 24, uh, Exodus 24, 7, if we could read that. I'm just going to get a couple. I got it. Just to ver verify what I'm saying. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, all that Yahweh has said, will we do and be obedient? There you go. They, they said, they heard the truth. They saw the miracles. They saw the overcoming of Pharaoh. They saw all the things. You didn't see them. I haven't seen them. I'm going to say Sarah's name again. Sarah didn't see them. <laughs> we didn't see these things. We have faith and confidence in the operation of Yahweh. And the children of Israel, they were right there and saw it. And they did not have the, the faith that we have because they didn't have the Holy Spirit at that time. Uh, can you go down, skip down to 2417 for me, Nick? Yep. yep. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to give it 16. And the glory of Yahweh abode on Mount Sinai, okay. and the clouds covered it six days. And the seventh day he called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of Yahweh was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and gave him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Moses was in the cloud 40 days and 40 nights. So now let's skip down to Exodus 32, 1. Okay. Please and thank you. I'll get there. Yep. 32 and 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, oh, make us idols that, we sh that shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. Right. So here they are trying to give the credit to a man. How many men did they see before Moses that was able to <laughs> part the Red Sea, hit the rock, bring out water, destroy Pharaoh and all that other stuff? And here they are giving the credit to a man. Here we are down at the end times. And here they're trying to give the credit to the vessel instead of to the spirit that was in that vessel. We know Dr. Kinley had the divine vision and revelation. He opened up so much to us. How else could he get that? Where else could it come from? There's all kinds of people that were before him that Einstein's and all of those that are here presently are were here. They have an intelligence of the world and they have an intelligence by looking at the universe and the atom and the cell and everything else, but they don't have no knowledge about Yahweh. That was revealed to us through Yahshua Messiah, but through that vessel, Dr. Kinley. It wasn't Dr. Kinley. And back here, it wasn't Moses. It was Yahweh that led them out and 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 spoke down to them so anyways here they are they build a golden calf they and they give praise to the man it was the man he's no longer here give us a god that can go before us and it goes on and talks about and they build the gold the golden calf can we get 32 26 i'm going to skip through the golden calf and all that 32 verse 26 Oops, okay sorry. 32 and Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said who is on Yahweh's side let him come unto me and the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him and he said unto them thus saith Yahweh thy Elohim of Israel put every man his sword by his side and go in and out of the gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor 
And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And their fellow people that day about 3,000 men. Wow. So, so there they are. At, who are you? Stan, who are you? Whose side are you on? They had the truth. The truth was Yahweh just spoke down the Ten Commandments, spoke down to them. And earlier we could have read where he says, I brought you out of, I did this, I did that, I did all of that. And here they are trying to give the credit to Moses. And what happened to those that were holding the truth and unrighteousness? Uh, and Romans 1.18 is, talks about, for the wrath of Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven against all impiety and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I'm going to get one other example, and that would be over in Kings. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get the whole story. I'm just going to kind of brush it. But in uh, 1 Kings 18, it, it, it's Isaiah. Or is it Isaiah? I think it's Isaiah. <laughs> the memory's the first thing. The memory's the first to go. <laughs> Elijah. Sorry. It was Elijah. Uh, so Elijah, we better get that and read it because I'm going to mess it up. And it's too important to understand about holding the truth and unrighteousness and where we are down at this last days. And who's going to hold the truth and unrighteousness? It's going to be somebody who has the truth. We know that we, the Roman Catholic Church was pointed out all the way along as having, knowing that the name was Yahweh and that all the truths that they knew and they were holding it in unrighteousness, they were pointed out. And then here in the school, everybody, and you hear all kinds of speakers that have been here for a long time, they would get up and tell you that the greatest feeling or love that they understood or felt was that every school, no matter which one you went to, was saying the same thing. They were united, and that was something they had never seen or felt out in the world because you had the Baptists, you had the Catholics, you had to do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. It was chaos. But in here, what we had was the unity of the Spirit, or so it appeared for the time that there was a unity of the Spirit of what was being said. So those are the people that were have seen the truth. They have seen the miracles that Dr. Kinley, Yahshua through Dr. Kinley, performed. He saw the, the, the foretelling of the futures. He saw all of that. They were there and saw it. Not all of them, but they've saw it. And they've had it testified. And they, they're the people that had the truth and had the righteousness of the truth. And they're the ones that are holding it in unrighteousness. They're, 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 they're destroying the truth by bringing in their own concepts, theories, and opinions. And in some cases, it's to get glory onto themselves. Uh, so Romans, or 1 Kings 18, 19, I guess is where I would like to start. Yeah, tell, get out of the King James yeah. Just to jump in, that's all. 1 Kings 18, 19. Holy name. Of the Holy Name Bible, sorry. Now yes. therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Car Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the sacred poles, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent me unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If Yahweh be Elohim, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people so, answered him. I'm going to interrupt you, if that's okay. So here we have the... There's 850 total prophets that we're talking about of Baal and those who worship the pole. And they ate at Jezebel's table. And then there's Elijah. And he's saying, this is the truth. You have the truth. You know the truth is Yahweh. You're, you're, you're no different than what I am as far as being the chosen people of, of Yahweh. And what the truth has been declared onto you. So here there is. There's 850 of them and one of him. And and verse 24. Verse 24. And yep. call ye on the name of your idol, and I will call on the name of Yahweh. And the one that answereth by fire, let him be Elohim. And all the people answered and said, It will it is spoke, it is well spoken. So here we are. We're now we're discerning between the truth and the lie. Uh 
So we know the story. They 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 cry all day, all night. They cut themselves, everything else. And then Elijah says, throw three buckets of water on there and everything else soaks it beyond belief. Yeah. Um, and then uh, 18, 1838. 1838. Thank you. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And 40. And, um, and Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Here, here you have the 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 truth and the unrighteousness, and it's a confrontation between the two. And even though these are the children of Israel and they know the truth, they were destroyed. Uh, why? Because Romans one eighteen for the wrath of Yahweh. Um, so I would like now. I think it's Second Peter or Fourth Peter. Sorry, I wrote it down. First Peter four seventeen. Only because I don't want to take all the time, but we have to understand we're not fighting against each other. We're not fighting against women, children, men, powers to be within. We're fighting, as was mentioned in uh, Revelations twelve seven. There was a war in heaven. Woe unto you, inhabitants of the earth. That's us. <laughs> We're made up of the earth. That's us. Woe unto us because Satan has come down knowing that he has a little time to deceive you and get to you to believe a lie. Now, we're not, they're not going to fool us with law, prophet, fulfillment. That's the yarn that was undone. That's that ball of yarn that has been rolled out. Oh, he came to institute water baptism for you. No. His name is Jesus. No. <laughs> he came to institute Lord's suppers. No. We know all this because we've been taught and understand about going back to the law and the prophets. And we saw back there with the children of Israel, they had to slay the lamb. There had to be four points of blood. They had to have the lamb in them. So when the Jehovah Witnesses tell you that the Holy, it's a Holy Spirit is a force upon you, no, the scriptures don't say that. Nothing that we've seen so far would indicate that. And for us to come out of captivity, we have to have that lamb in us. That's what Dr. Kinley preached. That's what Dr. Testify, Dr. Kinley testified. And he showed us how we can have confidence or faith in the operation of Yahweh. You couldn't see this on your own. It had to be shown onto you. And the world, even though they're being given this, they're not seeing it. <sighs> Sorry. First Peter 4, 17. Peter 4, 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah. For the time is come, the judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. This this instituted divine metaphysical research, and which was founded by Dr. Kinley, is in essence the same as Solomon's temple or the tabernacle. This is where it was. It was. It was. Um, uh, this is where this truth is being taught from is not the institute it was dr kinley but that's what was given that's what the name was given to and those who were in the institute at the top of the institute and who are there now the governing body who's telling us all these other kinds of stuff this we're going to read this again verse 17 yes please for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of yahweh that's the way it was with moses Levi's, there. Who's on Yahweh's side? Uh, <laughs> they were all killed. Baal, they were all killed. And you remember Daniel in the lion's den? They set him up so that he would be have to be thrown in the lion's den. He's thrown in the lion. What happened to everybody? All the families and their children and everything afterwards? They were thrown in the lion's den, and they were all eaten and destroyed. He's going to start at the house of Yahweh, in the sense of. Those who have held the truth in unrighteousness, that's where he's going to begin. And if I were those people, I would be very, very scared to, to 
has to face the wrath of Yahweh for holding the truth in unrighteousness. So I'm going to let you read down 17 to 19, then I'm going to be done. Okay. Thank for you. The time is, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the glad tidings of Yah Yahweh? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the unholy and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Yahweh commit and keep, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And that's what we're dealing with, folks. And that's what the two first two speakers, in my opinion, were hitting on, is onto the faithful creator who said, take my yoke upon you, learn of me. Have faith in the operation of Yahweh. Have faith in the promise as, as we have seen the promise running the line all the way down through. Have faith. Why? We're down to the end of the line. When the battle is at its hard, uh, hardest before the victory, is the battle is the hardest <laughs> just before the victory. That's when both sides are fighting at the hardest to gain victory and not be destroyed or, or, or taken out. So that's what we're up against, trying to identify. And, 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 and as soon as anything begins, look within yourself and ask Yashal Messiah to deliver you from whatever it is. And we know the bombardment today is greater than it has ever been for those who hold the truth in righteousness, which is us against the adversary, which holds it in unrighteousness. I thank you for the time. I hope you got something out of that and all praises go to Yahweh through Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Light for your testimony. Um, our fourth speaker this morning will be Dr. Katanya Parks from Charlotte, if she is able. Uh, good morning, class. Can you hear me okay? Morning, Tony. Good morning. Um, wow. I have really enjoyed the um, testimonies. And um, I'm thankful uh, to be here with you this morning and to be able to share with you um, the testimony that Yahweh has given me. And so thankful to have a testimony at the end of an age. And you have to forgive me because I'm, I'm filled up. I'm filled up because I know that it's grace and mercy. And um, it's Yahshua that keeps us and he leads us and he guides us and he comforts us. And so in the midst of a storm and everything that's going on right now, there is this battle. Talk about war in heaven. That war is going on right now. That old devil, he is trying to wear out the suns. That's happening right now. And so I was reflecting as I was listening to the vessels is that, you know, Yahshua, he has kept me. And I remember a time when we would all gather. And I thought it was so wonderful when the gospel, the true gospel was being preached. And I thought that I could go anywhere. It was like a big family reunion. Um, in Springfield, hearing the gospel, and then could go to Louisiana and be with, I thought, you know, the brethren, you know, with Aaron, Brian, that was one of the largest classes in uh, Louisiana, uh, in uh, um, Akron, uh, Cleveland, everywhere, just like one big family reunion, thinking we were all preaching the same thing. Now there is a division. There is a separation. Uh, he does have a wrath and he's wrapping it up. So we have to remain diligent and faithful to.
to this true gospel and being thankful that we know where to go and knowing that we didn't have anything to do with soul salvation. Yahshua, he's come down. He's given us an understanding. The whole world was deceived. The first vessel talked about that. But here now we gather and we preach and we understand that Yahshua has pulled us out of darkness and has delivered us through the power of Yahshua Messiah into this kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We see that history repeats itself over and over and over again. So when we was reading back there in Exodus, uh, the third chapter, when he appeared to Moses and he talked about that I have come down and to deliver you. He has seen, well, I, I don't want to butcher it. So let's pick it up because the same thing is going on right now. He's come down and he's delivered us. But let's just pick that up. Exodus 3 and is it 7 where he's come down and he's delivered Um and then out of the power of darkness, we're saying the same thing. He's given him the name. He's given us the name. And if someone can read that for me, we'll is it three and seven. seven? Yeah, we'll pick up a seven, probably through eight. Okay, thank and you. Yahweh, and Yahweh said, I have surely seen the afflictions of thy people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egypt. And to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And, uh, and unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Keep going. Okay, so that's good. So that's exactly what Yahweh has done for us today. So he's come down. He's heard our cry. He's given us the name for soul salvation to deliver us. We talk about Canaan's land. But that's, you know, a type and shadow of heaven. In other words, we're on this journey for eternal life. And because we were all deceived, we didn't know how to get there. And so there is a prescribed measure. We find out now for the first time that in this present kingdom age, that there's a whole lot has taken place. We had no idea that we were deceived. We had no idea that he had come in and fulfilled all these carnal ordinances uh, that really there were 613 laws fulfilled all those. In other words, fulfill means there are even definitions in our bible that the speaker was talking about the first vessel was talking about there are definitions in our bible we find out that when he came down that he was fulfilling all things we didn't even know what that meant we find out that the word fulfill means to complete to bring to an end to translate into reality so in other words and just keep the chart right there for me um in other words he came in and he set up or ordained from the foundation of the world what must be done for soul salvation. He was that lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He set everything up and then he came in and fulfilled it. We didn't know when we're reading now because it's been revealed to the sons. We didn't know anything about Moses' minister, Yahshua. You know, it says Joshua, but we know as the first speaker, the moderators are already told you, no J, no Jesus. It wasn't Jesus. I mean, it wasn't Joshua. It was, it wasn't Joshua. It was Joshua. So we didn't know anything about Joshua or <laughs> Joshua. We didn't know anything about that. We didn't know anything about the tabernacle pattern. We didn't know about anything that he had ordained or, or set up. We didn't know he was back there with Moses working out their soul salvation back then. 
That's why Joshua or Joshua had to be the one that would take them over into Canaan's land. And that's why Yahshua, the Messiah, our Savior, has to take us on over into Canaan's hand or heaven itself for eternal life because we were all deceived. So he set everything up that he ordained and then he came in and fulfilled it. So now he said that he was going to put it in our hearts and our mind. We didn't know anything about that. So let's just pick up Jeremiah and then let me have John 14. Jeremiah 31, 31, because see, I didn't know that um, he had worked out my soul salvation. I didn't know that I was deceived. I didn't know what it meant for that Holy Spirit. How does that affect me? What do you mean he's going to put it in my heart and mind? I thought I would be learning about him later. I thought as long as I was a law-abiding citizen, we all went to church, and that I tried to do the right thing, walking the old lady across the street, of trying to feed the minister on Sunday, or going to church and trying to pretend, uh, but knew nothing about it, but I knew something was wrong. I didn't know he had to put it in my heart and mind. I didn't know what he meant when he said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. So let's pick that up, Jeremiah 31, 31, and then John 14 and 26. Behold, the days cometh, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Read on. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Do you? Yes. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Okay, so how is he going to do that? He said he's going to put it in our heart and mind, um, and that he would be our Elohim. Will, and he would... Well, did you read down to the 34th verse? <clears throat> Want me 34 again? Read 34 again for me. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sin no more. Okay, so he's talking about this new, this covenant, this new covenant. And he's talking about after those days that he would put this law on our inward heart or put it in our heart and mind. Well, what days is he talking about? What do you, what do you mean after those days? So we find out that after there's an appointed time that truly back then, that they didn't know Yahweh. They didn't know what he was doing because he hadn't put his spirit in them yet. But he talked about there was going to be a day that he would put it in our hearts, in our mind. So we find out now for the first time, oh, okay. So if he's going to put it in our heart and mind, well, then let's pick up John 14. And we find out what he was doing. How is he going to put it in our heart and mind? After those days, after his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, so forth, the sons, here we gather and we preach. And for the first time, we could know something about our Heavenly Father through our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, because he's put it in our hearts and our mind we are part of 
that new covenant, which is his body. We didn't even know what the new covenant was. We had no idea because the church, and I say these things all the time, but I'm telling you for us to understand the mysteries that have been hidden down through the ages and dispensations of time, but now at that appointed time, this present kingdom age, he's come down, he's given us an understanding and he's gonna put it in our heart and mind. That's the benefit of having the Holy Spirit in you. Why? Because this is what he's going to do. John 14. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay, so first of all, let we're going to skip around a little bit here. Let's go to the 14 and 1. Oh, I'm sorry. 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and I tell you, I must go to prepare a place for you. Continue. Okay, so it says, let not your heart be troubled. And if you believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. See, we didn't know that Yahshua Messiah, that's a Father's house, that he had the house on. And those mansions are the souls of men. So when he talks about that, I go and prepare a place for you, that preparation, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I go and prepare a place for you. What are you talking about? That preparation was his death, his burial, his resurrection, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's a preparation that he made for the sons. That's why his death, his burial, his resurrection, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that's why it's the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 through 4. That's why it's the gospel, because he's made that preparation through his death, burial, and resurrection and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The gospel is not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is his biography. In the world, they had no idea because the whole world was deceived. And we were all deceived. So it's through that Holy Spirit and him working out our soul salvation. It was the shedding of his blood, the remission of sins. And so we don't want to count that as in vain. We can't give any honor, glory, and praise to another man. No honor, glory, and praise to you. No honor, glory, and praise to your, your preacher, only to Yahshua Messiah, because he worked out our soul salvation. That was a preparation. So it's talking about let not your heart be troubled. He's going away and preparing a place for us. But he's always been there. So how did he prepare that? As I said, through his death, burial, and resurrection, we found out what he was doing. He was fulfilling everything that he had already ordained you know just like we we see that adam he laid down his life for his bride yashua messiah he's gonna lay down his life for us i go and prepare a place for you and that's through the outpouring of his holy spirit see we didn't know that we were all dead through the fall of adam the world they still don't know that today but we were all dead. And maybe we should pick that up in Romans. Uh, is it 5 and 21? 5, 12. Thank you. If someone has Romans 5 and 12, or I can read it. Romans 5 and 12. Where, okay. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. 
and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Okay, so death has passed upon all men. Death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So we didn't know that. So it goes on, and I know we don't have time to read it um, down to, um, well, down to 15, please. Verse 13, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Okay, so, you know, it talks about uh, Adam. He was just a figure of that true Adam, which was Yahshua the Messiah, a figure of him to come, that was to come. And I'm still talking about this appointed time. Read on. But now, but not. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of Yahweh and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahshua the Messiah, hath abounded unto many. Okay, so the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahshua the Messiah, has abound unto many. So now we find out, okay, that that appointed time, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't... Uh, if I'm going to interrupt you, but we find out Galatians 4 and 4, that appointed time. See, we were all deceived, but there's that appointed time through the outpouring of his spirit. Galatians 4, 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, Yahweh has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Okay, that's so beautiful. Because now that fullness of time, see, we didn't know what because we had the name all wrong we were using jesus we didn't know what jesus was doing we didn't know what him dying on the cross what that had to do with my soul salvation i mean we knew he had died on the cross but we were all deceived oh okay well how does that affect me but see he talks about that fullness of time and he's talking about that he was going to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Okay, so the world, which we know in our Bibles, there's definitions, everything was hidden in a ministry, that there's ages and dispensations, but the world, they're, they're still under a prior age. They're still under that post-Diluvian age, and they're still trying to work out their soul salvation. They're still trying to be under these carnal ordinances, but he fulfilled all that and moved it out of the way. And now let me have uh, one more scripture in regards to that. So still we're talking about what is the benefit of that Holy Spirit. So let me have Acts 17 and um, 24 or maybe 18, and then we'll, we'll drop down to, to 31. And let me get to it and see exactly where that's at. Um, where it talks about we live, move, and have our being, you can start there first. Sure. Acts uh, 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device can be like the Most High. 
and the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world by righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given proof unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Okay, so it's talking about, again, this appointed time in which he will judge. Who? That's Yahshua Messiah. He would judge the world in righteousness. So there was a time he winked at all that ignorance in the 30th verse. He winked at all that. But now he's commanding all men everywhere to repent. So now he... There is a prescribed measure. There's a standard in operation. And that's through Yahshua the Messiah, through the outpouring of his blood, his death, burial, and resurrection. So that appointed time has come. So we, we know, as it says prior, that we live and we move and we have our being in, in Yahweh. But that doesn't make you a son. But how are you able to be in the bosom of the Father? Which the scripture lesson that Lazarus is in the bosom of the Father. Yahshua is in the bosom of the Father. That's being a part of that body. Everything is spirit materialized. Everything in Yahweh you move, live, and have your being. The whole world, but that doesn't make you a son. He has to put his spirit in you. A lot of people know the name Yahweh. They'll accept the name Elohim, but that name Yahshua Messiah, where your salvation lies because he has redeemed us through his blood. There's only one name for soul salvation for the sons. He has given us that name. And let's, I'm, I'm sorry, let, let me pick that up a little bit in Acts Four, where it says there's none other name. So we are just so blessed. The world, they always say, I'm blessed. No, you're not. You don't understand. But we understand that we are so blessed just to even know his name. Because eternal life is in his name. Eternal life, when he talks about, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. That is him putting his spirit in us and making us members of his body. He's the head and many members making up that one body. That's the temple. That's the true church, not on the corner. Where the world, you know, I'm going to church. They have no idea the word church means assembly, congregation. So here we gather in part of his body. So when we read in John 14, go to play or prepare a place for you that where I may be also. Then it talks about that he's the preacher. He's the teacher. He's going to bring all things back to our remembrance. So he doesn't have to recall anything. Yahshua in us, that Holy Spirit, he knows all things. We don't know. We don't haven't prepared a script. He causes us to want to learn of him, wanting to study, but he brings it back to our remembrance. He hasn't forgotten anything. So he's the chef. He has prepared this wonderful meal, which is soul salvation and how he has done that. So through each and every one of us that are his sons, are members of his body, then he just gives us an opportunity to be able to present, to serve, to edify one another, and to stay focused on Yahshua the Messiah, because we're at the end of an age. He's wrapping it up. He's gleaning the field. And so here we are to let that light shine, which is Yahshua Messiah. 
because he's come down. He's given us an understanding and allowing us to know something, these mysteries that the world had no idea about because we were all deceived. So um, I asked for, uh, we were talking about that appointed time. Let me go to uh, Matthew 11 and 25 again that benefit of having that holy spirit in you leading and guiding you and teaching that because the whole world was deceived so let's just read a little bit about that um uh, matthew eleven twenty five. at that time yasha answered and said i thank thee O father yahweh of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it has seemed good in thy sight, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. Okay. No man... Okay. Um, well, read on. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Okay, so again it says, all things now are delivered unto me. Uh, all things are delivered unto me, uh, my Father. So all things are delivered unto Yahshua the Messiah. He's a head over all things. But then he goes on to say, but no man knoweth the son but the father neither knoweth any man the father except the son and he whomsoever the son will reveal him so through the son the holy spirit through yahshua messiah he's a revealer of all things because yahweh who was inscrutable, incomprehensible, the limits of bounds and substance, the source of all things. We could not understand him in that state. He broke himself down as Yahweh Elohim, which the whole creation is patterned after, who's only to seen in divine visions and revelations, and then took a step further and manifested in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah. So the only way that we're getting back to the Father is through Yahshua the Messiah, that Holy Spirit. That's a benefit of having the Holy Spirit in you because there is no other way that you're getting back to the Father. It's only through the Son. So read on. 28 verse. Verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, so it's talking about come unto me, all ye that are laboring, heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Yahshua Messiah, he will give us rest. We'll give the sons rest because he's the head of the body. He's our comforter. He's our deliverer. He will deliver us as we seen, as we read where he talks about search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify unto me when we read back here in the scriptures and we read back here in the old covenant or we're reading about Moses and all the trials and tribulations and the children of Israel how they were able to come on through that Red Sea to even come up out of Egypt they were given that name the 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 Red Sea it departed and they seen the glory of Yahweh that's Yahshua the Messiah Yahshua Moses' minister. See, that these same principles back there or events is the same thing that's going on with us today. We've got to make that journey. 
we're coming up out of Egypt or the world. We're going, oh, we're seeing all kinds of things where we've gone through when we're standing in the holy place or in that wilderness. And what was happening there? You've seen this tabernacle that was constructed. You've seen this high, high priest, which I guess we're going to have to pick up Hebrews, the ninth chapter. This high priest uh, that's operating in and out of this tabernacle pattern, making, hello? Yeah, you're good still. Okay. Can you pick up Hebrews in nine chapter? Mm hmm Where about you want to get it? Right at one? Uh, let's try nine, and uh, I just want where it pointed to um, nine. Okay, which was a figure for the time then present, which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and various washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But the Messiah being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place having it obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of the Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to Elohim, purge your conscience from, death, from dead works to serve the living Elohim. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by the means of death, the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. Okay, so you know, and all of this is is good. And then you know, yeah. the tenth chapter it talks about that he comes in the the volume of the book. But all of this is pointing up to Yahshua the Messiah. And so even this New Testament really is being a part of his body where he's worked out our soul salvation and he's get allowed us to be a part of that body. So um, when we talk about now in this present kingdom age, um, we know that he is spirit and that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so in order to do that, he has to put his spirit in us. So now we find out for the first time that even um, Romans 14 and 17. Now I know I talk about these things all the time and I know that you've heard them before, but it is the simplicity of the gospel that is so powerful. And for us to continue, because we know that not only we talk about the whole world being deceived and being a part of that world, he's pulled us out of darkness. But now we're talking about at the end of an age, those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So, um, He's got, what are we being saved from? He's got a wrath. Now, for those who have been given the truth, what, that Yahshua is our Savior. And then let me, before I get to the next scripture, let me have Romans 14 and 17. For the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it's talking about what the kingdom is. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's going on right now. So that's why in Colossians, and we won't have time to get it all, giving thanks unto the Father who hath delivered us 
from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's going on right now. So being in the kingdom or part of that body, then we're learning and we're growing in his grace and his mercy. And so for those who know, knew the truth, and now they're holding in it in unrighteousness right now. And you know that the kingdom and salvation is only in Yahshua and Messiah. So if you're holding the truth in unrighteousness and you're saying that Dr. Kinley is your savior or that you're the savior or that um, the name doesn't even matter and they've taken that name and brought it to naught um it's almost like a church now but they were given the truth and doc told us he said that someone was going to come along uh out of the clear blue and to change everything that i have taught you and talked about what they were going to do and that I want you to be prepared to reject it. So they knew the truth. I mean, I gather with so many and we were all preaching that Yahshua is our savior. And so we're not hearing that now. They're worshiping a man. They're worshiping themselves. It's like a dog that's returned unto its own vomit. There's no salvation in any other, none, except only in the name of Yahshua Messiah. And maybe we should read that and reiterate that again. So if you're hearing anything else, like in Galatians, if they preach any other gospel, I don't care if it was an angel that has dropped down and preaching, and I know I'm probably butchering that, preaching you anything else that you have been taught then you want to reject that. So we're witnessing the same thing right now. The same thing is going on right now. So let me just, I had you, I called two scriptures. I'll let you read those. I'm sorry. Um, you had Acts? Acts at 4, where it talks about not another name. Let me have that. Sorry, I went to 14 by accident. Um, Acts 4 and uh, eight. 8 down through 12 or just 12? Uh, you can read 8 through 12, it's fine. Okay, then, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and children and elders of Israel, if this day we be examined of the good deed done to the infinite man, by which means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom Yahweh raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone that was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Okay. So there's none, none means none, no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And so here we are gathering at the end of an age. We do not want to be a, a part of those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And then it also talks about that. Um, is it Second Timothy? Uh, talks about the perilous times that we're in now. Now the... Uh, uh, Dr. Light, three. he used a lot of scriptures and it was beautiful where he went back and he was showing how that they were holding the truth in unrighteousness. They heard the truth. They had said everything that Yahweh said we will do. And then they built that golden calf, you know, and then we read over there in, in Kings 18, uh -huh. where they were really worshiping Baal. That's like the world, Lord and Baal. That's the same thing. But see, they knew the truth. He read over there in Peter 4 and 17 through 19. Let's pick that up. And then uh, Thessalonians where it's talking about that now. So let's read uh, 1 Peter 4 and 17 again. Let's pick that up real quick. 
and then Thessalonians. First Peter four and 17. For the time has come that the judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the glad tidings of Yahweh? Right. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the unholy and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Yahweh commit to keep of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Okay, so that's where we're at now. And so we know that not only in the midst of the storm through Yahshua Messiah, he's our comforter and he's our deliverer and uh, he's our revealer of all things. And as we've seen how it was, they said Joshua was Joshua who fought every battle. We know that Joshua is fighting our every battle. It's a peace be still and looking to the author and finisher of our faith, which is in uh, Hebrews. We won't have time to get at the, the 12th chapter and um, talks about that sin that easily besets us, which is doubt. So we, He's given us all these witnesses. We have to know that it's Yahshua in us that's leading and guiding us right now. So it is examination now, examining yourself to see where you're at. It's also test time before you go to another level. Don't you have one test, you know, after another? This is a overall what you've learned, the final exam, which is what we're going through now because He's getting ready to wrap it up because, but for us, the sons, he's, he's delivering us and he's saving us from that wrath. Now it talks about his wrath is just as great as his love. And it's going to be poured out without mixture. So now is not a time to be, um, um, there's no skip, skip to my loo. This is not an easy journey. It's no time to, uh, uh, it's a time for examination. It's a time to call out to Yahshua. He's our father. He's our true parent. He's going to lead us and he's going to guide it. It's a time for us to get, get yourselves out of the way. Um, because salvation is only through Yahshua the Messiah. And if you fall short, that's okay because everything gets uncovered by that light, which is Yahshua. Like you take a light, you may shine it under the bed. Don't you see everything? Now the devil may want you to think, oh my goodness, you don't know anything. <laughs> Look at you. You fell down again or you failed a task. But no, for the sons, everything gets uncovered for resolution, because Joshua's gonna fix it. Sometimes you may not know that you're short in something. Oh, I didn't know that was still there. So everything is getting uncovered now. Why? Because he's clothing us in his attributes. We're putting on the whole armor of soul salvation. So those wedding garments are his attributes. So we're gathering twice the amount, we're learning of Yahshua because we have a place to go. So on this journey for eternal life, stay focused, stay and ask Yahshua because he's going to give you the will and the do to be able to be, you want to be acceptable in his sight. We're the only ones who know this true gospel. If Yahshua allows for you to share it with someone, we don't have a heaven or hell that we can put anyone in, but our mission is to be about our father's business. Preaching minutes, this gospel, please. thank you, in season and out of season. If he allows for you to be able to say something to someone else at the end of an age. Remember the whole world was deceived. You were deceived also. So if you can let your light shine and give them something, he knows who his sheep are. Brother, it's 
at a store or on this uh, platform, a Zoom class or talking to, you know, family or loved ones, then you want to do all that you can, even though it's Joshua giving you the will and the do to um, stay focused on him. So um, we are going through a lot. There's a lot of disasters that are going on right now. It's a reflection of what's going on in the world. It's also for the signs we can take a look at that and see what's going on. There are a lot of people like this, the sub, a lot of people, they paid a lot of money to be sealed in darkness. They were given warnings that there's a problem and they didn't take heed. A lot of the people are paying money to be sealed in darkness. They're giving warning and didn't take heed. And so we want to be about our father's businesses and there's righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. So if you got anything out of that, all honor and praise goes to our only savior, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. And I'll turn it back to the moderator. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much, Dr. Parks, for your testimony. Um, <clears throat> give me one second here. Um, Lionel, is there anything you want to say for a couple of minutes, any announcements or anything? Any questions? Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, yeah, we can take questions after the doxology. I was just going to say that, uh, I'll pop in the chat box is the North Texas zoom that takes place today at uh, 3 PM Eastern two central. Uh, I can't quite convert that into Pacific time for Sean, but I think Sean's probably a class anyway at that time, but, but just, that's the only announcements I have at this time. All right, then. Um, if that's all we have for announcements, I guess we'll go into the moderation. No, no. Doxology. Doxology. And moderation. Doxology. Let's just restart. Apology. <laughs> Do it all over again. Um, <clears throat> may we all rise to the doxology. The doxology is taken from the last two verses in the book of Jude. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, the Yashin Messiah, Sovereign, long glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever, let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 Any questions out there? <clears throat> 